Um, so let's start with the extraction. You're going to do your quick select tool. You can also do this new select subject. Um, sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. I'm so used to doing it the way I do. So we're going to select a mask. Um, we're going to go to the uh, refine edge tool. I'm just going to make sure it looks good on the outsides. Usually I have to uh, use the add brush to make it look as perfect as possible. Let's add a little piece there. And if you guys already know how to do this or this isn't interesting, feel free to click the button and, and move forward a little bit. I'm one of those people that's like, okay, I don't need to know this part, so just keep it moving. So let's keep it here. Now this, you do want to spend some time on this because this is going to be your main, um, your main braid that you're going to duplicate from. Um, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to hit OK. We've got the braid. I always, for all of mine, just in case I ever want to come back and remodify it, I do a copy so that, um, and I save it, so that I can always come back and add or subtract or do, you know, I'm, you might find that you did something wrong and you can always come back to it. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put that uh, right here. There was my old braid. So now we're going to do a brown and, and just to show you that you can, you can really use um, any of the, any colors. Let's zoom in. Um, and make it match. So let's see, this one I can tell already is, is red. We probably need to add some cyan. Um, but let's put it around here because we're going to need to blend it in and then we're going to need to mask it off and then blend it into her hair. So let's start with, let me get this up here so you guys can see. Uh, let's start with a color balance. No, I'm sorry, selected color. What am I thinking? Okay, yellows. Let's do, uh, start with cyan, go up. Oops, don't forget to clip it. I do it all the time. Uh, let's start with some cyan to get some of that yellow out. Let's do a little bit of magenta. Not that much, maybe that much. Let's do, yeah, let's get some yellow out of here. Looking okay. So let's get some blacks out. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to add a curves layer and it's going to make it a little bit darker. I'm also going to go to the neutrals. I'm going to add a little more cyan. Yeah, that's looking good. I'm going to take a little bit more of the magenta away just a little bit. Yeah, and I'm going to take out the yellow. And add a little bit of black to bring just a little depth back. And let's see what it's going to look like when I add the curves to it. Oops, clip it. <laughs> and then I'm going to also add a levels layer. When you guys see that your subject um, is brighter or shinier um, than the background or what it's going to, you can always add a levels that can kind of reduce the contrast or reduce the shine. Um, to make it blend better. So let's see. I always, always bring this down too because when you're doing these adjustments, look how, I mean, it's it's so such a stark, if, unless you're doing a, a, a minor layer, if you're doing this to blend your subject in to make shadows or use it as a shadow to brush on your mask or what have you, um, always bring this down too because it's a subtler change um, and it can, uh, it'll help with blending. It just, it won't be so obvious. So finally, let's do the levels. And I'm going to take down, oops, again with the clip. I'm going to take it down to about here. Maybe a little bit more. Yep. Now let's see what this looks like when I actually blend it in. I might make some changes, but... This is looking pretty good. I might have added too much of the levels. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, we still want it to look real, but you see how her hair is soft. We still want that to be soft. But now let's add a layer mask and let's just opacity around 18. That's good. And then let's just try to mask it into her hair to see if it's blending well. This is really the hardest part. I mean, hard, hard isn't even, it's just, it's not hard. <laughs> just takes a little bit of time and and playing around to just make sure it, it blends in. And then I'm going to bring this out a little bit so that it's not just stuck there like that. It looks like it's actually coming from her hair. 
Oops, now you see that little line there? I, I blended too much, so I control z would that, which undoes what you did. And I think that's looking pretty good. Maybe you want to mess with, maybe you want to mess with the curves. Yeah, there it is, just a little bit lighter. Now, now that you have that, go to your um, original braid and then hold the shift key down and go all the way to the top of all your adjustments and hit control J. You just made a copy of that braid. Then hit control T and then bring it down. You're gonna bring it down and then you're going to put it on top of the last full braid and you'll figure it out when you, and then you're gonna hit okay to make it place there. And then you'll probably have to modify this one which is perfectly fine because you'll be copying it. And then we'll hit the, oops. And then you wanna just click on your, your braid layer so that you can get the warp up here. And then you'll take it in so that it is in line with the braid that you put it on top of. And then if, you're, if you um, are a detail freak like me, you'll see that it needs just a tad um, blending. So you just get your black brush, you just click it on, off, on. Can you even see, where'd it go? Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, that's going crazy. Okay, so when you go on and off, you see that it connects here, but that actually looks pretty good. So, and most people aren't going to go in that far, but I really think that you, it looks, it looks good. Um, so then I'm going to take that one. Since we already modified the top, I'm going to stick with the one we just copied. I'm going to hold the shift key down as I select all the layers. I'm going to hold control J or press control J. Then I'm going to pull it down and I'm going to add it back to the first full and you can you can add it here but if you need to do any blending sometimes you you won't be able to mask it off the way that you want so you end up uh, having a blank spot that you have to fill in um, but it's just trial and error there's no perfect way to do this it's just you do it until it looks right okay again I'm just holding the shift selecting all of it control J pulling it down And at the end, you can merge all of these and make it fatter and at certain parts. You can you can do whatever you want. I'll, I'll show you that. I, I won't do too much with it since we're just trying to get the basics here. But, um, and then I'll do one more because we have to have it hanging off the edge. And there we go. And then sometimes when I'm doing a, a, a clone or a duplicate um, step, and you see all these little things here and they look the same. If you are, if you don't like that, if you don't want it to be obvious, you can always pull from another area and use your clone button to clone over it. But I think it looks pretty good. Um, so I'm going to leave it like that. Then I'm going to, I don't know if you guys have pixel squid, um, but if you don't, you should uh, because it's awesome. So I, mine's 15 a month. I think they just went up to 20 bucks a month, uh, but it really is worth it because, you know, when you want something that you can control, uh, an object you can control, I can take this in here and I can change the, the perspective or the angle. Um, and then the size, obviously, these are all objects um, that you can place. And you, I mean, there's tons of things you can get from crowns to flowers and, um, anything that you can think of. But the majority of these are all commercially licensed except for a few. Um, some are marked editorial, uh, like I guess they're probably like Disney or some licensed um, images, but for the most part, they're all free to use. So then after that, you can get flowers, um, get you know regular flowers off Pixabay um, or any other place, any other uh, site that you use for stock. I, I know I subscribe to um, Deposit Photos, Adobe Stock, Dreams Time, 123RF. So you can always use stuff from there as well. I recommend going to Pixabay first. Um, if you can find free stock, that's always the best. Um, and then like I'm doing here, 
you can you can stick it in the sides of the braids um, you might want to make it look you know for instance this is why I love uh, pixel squid because um, you can change for instance if you want it to look like it's sticking out the side I just change the angle and I can do this and then these work the same as any other image that you put there you can just put a mask on it and mask over like the stem part so it looks like it's going into the braid so I'm not gonna make you watch me stick all the flowers on here but you get it this is how you make the braid oh um, in case anybody wants to see the how to merge and warp the whole entire braid hold um, your shift button and select everything um, merge it make sure you merge it after um, after you uh, I'm sorry after you modify and you, you mask make sure that you've got everything that you want and then you've got one single braid and from there you can hit control T and you can um, either you know make it fatter here you can try to make it fatter up here you can also hold control down um, when you're selecting an, an, um, an object and um, stretch it without it being um, it's kind of like warp you can stretch it without being con confined by the, the ratio um, so control T oops control T for instance if I hold the control button down I'm, I'm stretching it out like a perspective versus if you don't hold that control button out it's all gonna be you know be bound by that original box so there you go pretty simple that is how you make a Rapunzel braid so I suggest you hop on any of your um, stock sites, grab a braid, and go to town and show me what you came up with.